So we're here with Pete Hines, obviously almost famous now with the Bethesda titles of the games. I think people almost associate you with them. Uh, with Skyrim, you've arguably got your biggest title to date. Um, some people, maybe even yourself included, may find that a bit surprising, because although Morrowind and Oblivion did have their own kind of success, this one has reached a whole new level. The hype, the anticipation has ramped to the roof. Is that something you expected, or has it taken you by surprise as well? Um... Well, we're certainly always gratified by, by the enthusiasm and interest in what we're, in what we're doing. Um, you know, I, I think what we probably have seen is that from Morrowind to Oblivion, it took a pretty big jump in terms yeah. of the number of folks who were interested, and we're seeing kind of a similar jump from Oblivion to Skyrim. Um, whether that's because people think it looks cool or, you know, we've just continued to develop our Elder Scrolls fan base, you know, as we've continued to put out games, it's hard to say. Um, you know, so I don't know how surprised, but certainly uh, you, you know, humbled and, and uh, excited to, to get the game out for all of those folks. Definitely. And does it make it harder for you? Because obviously with Morrowind to Oblivion, you kind of know your fan base, whereas now it does seem to have skyrocketed. You keep getting thrown in there, game of the year, game of the year. Mm -hmm. And this is the year with ga games like Gears of War, Batman, Uncharted. So do you guys have to kind of be smart with the way you kind of integrate all your new features so you don't lose new players? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, regardless of... This sort of when we're designing the game, it comes before anybody knows about it or is so excited about it. So we, you know, we, we try and, and be smart about the way we, we design. I mean, we're not afraid to take chances. We sort of blow everything up and start all over again every time we make a game. And so there's nothing that, you know, is definitely in or out. We kind yeah. of evaluate everything again. Um, I think part of that process, we, we don't necessarily make choices on, well, what's going to appeal to a wider fan base? We, we think about it more just what's going to make the game better? How do we yeah. make a better game? Um, and our, at the end of the day, our belief is if you make a really good game, a lot of people are going to want to buy it. Um, and, and how you take it from this much to this much sometimes has more to do with um, you know, marketing and PR and how, how you get the word out there than it does like features in the game. So we, we just try and make it fun. Um, we try and improve off of what we did last time, maybe try some things differently, and then it, you know, that we just feel like that game will find an audience, and, and in this case, it, you know, it looks like it's going to be a pretty big audience. Yeah, definitely. And it was always a plan for you guys to um, release the Elder Scrolls V on the same consoles that you did Oblivion, because many people looked at Oblivion and went, can't top this, this is amazing. If Skyrim comes out, everyone goes, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Is that something you always planned, or is that just you get used to the tech and you think, man, we can definitely do this? No, we definitely wanted to put um, numerous games out on this, on this generation. You know, our joke internally was we, we only manage one Xbox game from from. <laughs> Bethesda, from Bethesda Game Studios with Morrowind. So we said, all right, this time around, like, you learn so much when you put a game out on a console, how to get more out of it, how to do more, um, that it really does benefit to, to put out multiple titles. So, you know, I think we made a pretty big jump from Oblivion to Fallout 3. I think we've made another big jump from Fallout 3 to Skyrim. And that's all down to, you know, we've got an unbelievably talented team uh, at Bethesda. Our programmers are top notch and really know uh, and are learning more and more about how to get every ounce uh, out of the current gen consoles. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's a case where we didn't, we didn't feel like we needed new hardware. We just needed to do better with the current uh, gen platforms, and I think we've continued to do that. Mm. So one last question as well. For games in general, then, do you think we could possibly wait a couple more years before we get the next gen of machines? Um, you know, for, for, for me, for us right now, like, we feel like we are, are, are doing just fine. Like, you, it's not like you're looking at the, the games that are coming out this year, and you name some of them. Uh, you know, you look at games like Uncharted 3 or Skyrim or Rage or, or what all these folks are doing, and they, they look amazing. Like, nobody's yeah. looking at it and saying, you know, we could really take this to another level if we had better hardware. Right now, we're, we're all enjoying being, get to, being able to iterate uh, on these platforms platforms and do it over and over again and get better and better yeah. um, and I think as a result the games keep looking better so I'm in no rush to move to another platform and, and have to learn it all over again <laughs> perfect excellent behinds thank you very much thank you take care